Scott. I'm now. We are Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. And what are we discussing today, Nell? Um, consumerism in Booktube and bookish consumerism. And bookish consumerism. So, this is a topic you want to discuss because you have what you consider a controversial opinion on it. Oh, 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 I like to buy books. So, you're arguing that consumerism is not bad when it comes to books. I th- no, I, th- uh, I think that's not what I'm arguing. I think what I'm saying is there's a lot of videos out there talking about consumerism and how people have reined in their consumerist habits and um, how they only buy secondhand and and how they're trying to reduce their consumption when it comes to books and I feel like we shouldn't necessarily feel guilty about it. We shouldn't be feel guilty about buying books. Yes. That is your stance. Now, there's a whole movement out there to reduce consumerism in basically every aspect of our life because consumerism is basically the scourge of the 21st century. Yeah, look, I totally agree with that except when it comes to art. Okay. Okay, and I want to kind of disagree with you now, but, but now that you've expressed your point like that, I kind of agree with you. There are, however, more environmentally conscious ways of consuming books, such as buying books secondhand, such as buying e-books. Is there, is that something that... So I have a problem, I... I... Everyone to their own thing. Like, uh, no judgy pants, whatever. Do you, yeah. you do you. But um, unless there's a budgetary reason, I think that buying books secondhand is not necessarily a good thing because it doesn't add to the pool of money that creates art. No. It doesn't feed back to the artist. It doesn't. Um, but buying buying classics, on the other hand, doesn't do that either. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, so yeah. so buy secondhand books if the author's dead. Yes. This is your argument. Yeah, I'm down so with far. that. And um ebooks and audiobooks are fine. I think that's fine. If if you if if you're comfortable consuming books that way, then then lucky you, it's cheaper. Yeah, but you are anti audiobook because you don't it doesn't I, work for you. I struggle to absorb the information. And I'm the opposite, I'm very pro audiobook. Uh, an ebook. I'm very pro ebook as well. I used to have a Kobo, which is like a Kindle, I guess, um, but I did not find that easy to and... use. Um, I don't necessarily think it was all the Kobo's fault, um, but ultimately it broke when I was in the middle of a novel, and that was the final straw for me. <laughs> You finished this novel this year, ten years later as well. I did. <laughs> it was Donna's Heart, something the goldfinch. The gold finch. Yeah, um, and and I had to start it again. Cause... But you started it when it was released, and you finished it in February this year. Yeah, because of the COVID. Because incident. the COVID died in the middle, and I didn't have a copy. Yeah. So I think e-readers have gotten a little bit of a rough deal because of the the goldfinch incident. <laughs> yeah. Wherewith I have Scribd installed on my phone. Uh, if I want a book on ebook for whatever reason, I just open Scribd and I read it. And I'm actually much happier because when I'm physically reading a book, I generally do it in the morning because if I do it in the evening, I tend to be asleep pretty quickly. But, yeah. and this is terrible, but the blue light of the screen helps keep me awake for hours on end, which is great for reading a book. <laughs> Not so good for sleeping. Not so good for sleeping. Yeah. No. Um, I think we're getting a bit sidetracked, but that's why I'm pro ebook because it allows me to read books that... Yeah, I think, like, whatever format suits you, I, I definitely don't think that this is about... I, 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 I prefer um, the format of a, of a physical co- copy, but that's just... Yeah, there's something nice about physical pages as well. Um, Okay, so what about the problem now 
when you buy your books, do you look at who the publisher is and how they treat their artists? Oh, I don't, and I'd really like to. There was a time in my life when I was like super knowledgeable about music and and that sort of issue in the music industry, and that would guide my um, my purchasing choices. And I feel like. Um, I feel like maybe sometimes we'd be better off buying it a book secondhand and then making a donation directly to the artist. But I don't know what the book industry is like. I don't. I don't actually. I'm not very well informed. Yeah, on that. it does seem to me that a lot of very good authors are not full time authors. authors. Yeah, and that is a real problem as far as I'm concerned. That that you know unless. I mean, the latest YA craze, like, I can't imagine Sarah J Maas is living in a rental, but... Yeah, but I remember, I went to see, um, I went to a Q&A reading event with Tim Winton, who is, you know... Yeah, he's Australia's number one. You would think that he would be the most well-off Australian author, if only because he gets studied in schools and therefore X amount of his novels get bought every year. Um, but he said that the difference between a published author and, you know, being on Centrelink was the difference between catching the bus and driving a secondhand Corolla. So that's not a huge difference. Centrelink is our doll, by the way, just a... Our welfare, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... I mean, that was also him playing to the crowd, I would imagine. So, you know, a grain of salt, but... But I do know that Tim Winton is a professor of English at a university, I believe, or a professor of literature or something. I have no idea. All I know about his non-writing activities is his environmental activism, which oh. he is, doesn't get paid for. <laughs> and, I, and, and as I said, I realise I'm getting him confused with John Marsden, who is a very different author. A oh, very different author. A very different author indeed. And, but a successful Australian author in in the YA genre, actually. Yeah, for sure. Um, and he makes his living teaching in TAFE. And, and his books have been made into movies. Yeah. So... There's not a lot in it for authors, which really, to me, it points out how the machine is broken. That, and, and I think this is actually something that is true with our work life, where we're greengrocers, but that the people who make the money in art aren't the creators of the art. And the people who make money in the food industry no, the aren't the growers of food. No, they're the owners of land. They're the um, and usually only because their land goes up in value, not because... Yeah. Um, um, I do think... Um, in Australia, there are several programs, and, and, and it's probably a nation-by-nation nation thing, really, but there are several programs where you apply for grants and prizes and that sort of thing, and, and authors live off those sort of funds while they write their next whatever um, seems to be quite common. Yeah. But it's not like... Uh, it doesn't appear to be a good living. No. No, it doesn't. And, I mean, it's... It, the problem with art today is that the difference between somebody who is eating their own boots and somebody who is... a billionaire is not actually that much it's it's generally not about the quality of the novel it's about a bit of hype and a bit of you know because a, a hyped novel and an unhyped novel have both have the same chance of being good really but one of them has just gotten the right people reviewing it and had a bit of luck and i also think like marketing. if if you look at she who will not be named she hasn't made her money off book sales she's made her money off merch Yes. You know, like, your ability to turn your novel into... Like, can you imagine, uh, you know, Donna Tartt, Skullfinch, the bobblehead toys? Yes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, but let's face it, people who are fans of 
YA wizarding books are much more likely to go out there and, and buy, buy a costume. Yeah, where with does anybody out there? Does anybody have a Donna Tart costume, a Donna Tart bobblehead, a Donna Hart Tart poster on their wall? You know, literary fiction lovers. It is on my. Where pers- is your Donna Tart merch? It is on my personal Christmas list that I would like a print of the Goldfinch for our home, but. But that's not Donna Tart merch. That's like pre-existing art. Yeah. That she's referenced. So. Oh, the painting. Yeah, yes. the painting, the actual painting. Yes. Um, yeah. So I think that as consumers, if we're trying to support the artist by buying new books, this isn't the way I would do it, I would almost like pirate an ebook online and donate some money to their Patreon account. But do we like is that what people do? Do people are people engaged? If you break the law, no, tell don't, us. Don't, in the don't tell me about breaking the law, but do tell me if do you are you engaged with anyone's Patreon um or or other self funding strategy? Um I know I, I engage with um, Amanda Palmer, who makes all sorts of art. She doesn't really write books. I mean, she has, but she doesn't. Um, but she does do writing, um, and she makes music and does performance and all sorts of things, and it's all funded through her Patreon. And I engage that way. Do you? Does any of our audience engage with anyone who in that way, but particularly like bookish? I think that that would be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I to suspect, hear about. I suspect Donata. I suspect Amanda Palmer is in the weird position of actually being able to be supported by a novelist if her art goes to shit. Yeah, but she she also runs programs like when COVID happened. She ran a program and donated a bunch of her um, Patreon funds. Um, towards the performance arts because of all the actors, singers, comedians that would be out of work while the world was shut down. Um, And she started a big movement to support those guys, which was really cool. Um, I don't know, like, it's sort of like anti-consumerist way to spend your money. Yeah. A little bit, which is cool. So... Yeah, so we need to figure out how we can support bookish artists in the society that we're living in. I mean, without... Without necessarily supporting capitalism, which is what I'm just flat out doing at the moment. I'm supporting capitalism. I buy all my books, like, that I want. I just buy them. Yeah, yeah. Because I want them. And that's the other thing I really enjoy. Like, I've never before in my life lived in a place of abundance of with books. I've always been dictated what I could read as to what was available in my local second-hand shop or what was in the library. I could never just say, oh, I heard about this book. I read about this review. Um, I know this book is coming out. The idea of a new release in my uh, in my grasp is not something I've ever had access to before. And now we're at a point in our life where we do have a bit of expendable income, which I have never had before. Um, And I can choose what I want to read and I can buy the new release and I can spend $40 on a pretty copy if I want to. I mean, I I generally don't. I generally buy more books rather than prettier copies, but um, that's because I'm an addict. Yeah. Um, I think this is the other thing. The, if you're reading literary fiction in particular, you tend to read more backlist, more older prints and stuff, wherewith if you're getting excited about a specific author or a specific genre, like, a you know, somebody who is a really big fantasy fan might get really excited at the new Brandon Sanderson novel and every three weeks when Sanderson releases a new novel. That's four four months long, yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he does it. He must have a time machine. Or a little army of elves. Um, 
yeah, he, he uses the uh, James Patterson model where he actually doesn't write his own books. Ooh. Yeah. Controversy. Yeah. Um, but that's a different topic. Um, I, I'm not sure what he does. But anyway, going back to the point, if you, you will get excited about every Brandon Sanderson novel. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, you'll do the same with various other authors and other genres. Like, uh, most people like us, when we read 100 books from 97 different authors... Most people, the last hundred books, if they have read a hundred books, probably come from, you know, a much smaller sample of authors. Yeah, whereas, especially this year, when I've found that I've discovered a lot of new authors, because that's been sort of a mission of mine, um, it really has resulted in more purchasing, because I'm like, I love Octavia Butler, who knew? Now I need everything. Um, yeah. I decided earlier this year, before I even went on my discovery rampage, that I wanted to read everything Margaret Atwood had ever written, which means I bought everything that Margaret Atwood had ever written. I haven't read it yet, but I have it, so that when I choose those titles off my shelf, they're available to me. At Wodian Mood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At Wodian? At Woodian? At Woodian Mood? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to be fancy in it. Uh, it yeah. sounded like PG Wodehouse to me. You're not very fancy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. You're cute. Not fancy. Am I cute or is it just Bryn? Well, am I just like I'm covered in puppy? Yeah, that is pretty cute. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is my stop the puppy asking to go for a walk while we're filming tactic because he's having a friend come over to go for a walk with in an hour's time oh. and he's too impatient to ask yeah. to wait rather. It's because he can't read a clock. Um, where do you come from? Do you come from a place of providing yourself with abundance? Do you have budgetary concerns you have to worry about and that's why you... Or anti-consumer? Are you anti-consumer because you're anti-capitalist? And have you found a way to feed the artists and the art community? Yeah, I'm really... I think that's the thing I'm most how, interested how to can hear we, from. How can we support artists? I mean, and there's nothing wrong with supporting the publishing community. Plenty of booktubers we know and we like work in the publishing community. We don't want, to, we don't want them to lose their job, but we just want... We, we, we think it should be more feasible for an author to make good money yeah. without them having to be... And to not necessarily have to be restricted by what a publisher will publish. Like, yeah. that's the real ideal, is to put authors in a position where they can say, this is the real thing I want to say. And, like, essentially self-publish without any sort of censorship or... Yes. You know, and be in a position that that means that they'll still end up with a professionally edited, you know, produced high quality text um, rather than the what often happens to self-published books is that they don't necessarily get the, the fine tuning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe we should live in a world where authors pay editors and publishers yeah rather than and we pay authors like a stipend yeah yeah that would be cool yeah and that might be the solution but then how do you get to be an author yeah i mean that that basically means that only rich people can be authors doesn't it like because you need a, a seed capital you to write that first book yeah and and to have it put through the editing and publishing process because you're going to have trouble finding supporters unless you're published <laughs> yeah yeah mm. it's a it's a horrible world we live in that is anti-art really isn't it i i do think that art is severely underfunded and undervalued in our world and not just bookish art but all art um and i think that's part of part of the problem part of the reason why this is a discussion for musical artists as well as um authors as well as sculptors and painters and all the things yeah yeah well this is a depressing conversation because we don't have any answers and we think the world sucks so (laughs) tell us things tell us why you think the world doesn't suck or what you think the solutions are or anything you have to say really yeah love Um, to hear from you in the comments also if you're new here make sure you subscribe 
and ring the bell so that you get an annoying notification every time we post because we're awesome. Oh, <laughs> <That's it. laughs> all right, that's all from us. Pretend that we have a witty outro. Bye. Bye.